I cannot wait to see it. Steven Spielberg's The BFG is, of course, based on the best-selling children's book by Roald Dahl, and his daughter Lucy joins me now. Welcome. Thank what a you. joy to meet you. I feel like I'm only one step away from that incredible man that was your father. Uh, firstly, let's start with the film. What did you think of it? I love the film. The BFG was my story growing up before it was even put on paper. So when I was a little girl, um, I used to get the BFG every single night. Dad used to sort of pace back and forth in my bedroom and tell us stories about the BFG that lived under our orchard. And then after he would tell us a story, he would... We didn't know it was him, we thought it was the BFG. We used to have to leave our window open a tiny crack and about five minutes later, a great big bamboo would come through the window, through our closed curtains, and my sister would get the first... <sighs> and then I would get... <sighs> and then it would retract. And so my whole childhood, I thought that the BFG was actually blowing dreams into our room. Oh, that's so amazing. Magical. It that's was magical. so magical. So seeing it then on film, you must have been slightly worried. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the set up in Canada, and that was really amazing. That was, that was a little nerve-wracking. I thought, what's it going to be like? And at the end of that, I wrote to Stephen and I said, I honestly felt like Charlie walking into the chocolate factory for the first time because everything that I had imagined had come to life. So they had done it that beautifully. Oh, how wonderful. And you, I, I hear you were in tears when you first saw it. I'm not surprised at I all. was, because I, I felt like I had spent two hours with my dad. Oh. And, and a combination of my dad and also a chap called Wally, um, who was our great friend and gardener throughout my whole childhood. And that's who Quentin uh, drew the, the uh, illustrations on, um, Wally's ears and Wally's... Uh, Wally's hands and, and yesterday I actually sat next to Wally's daughter Anthea. Oh, how wonderful. And, and whenever the BFG came on she said, oh, there's Dad. <laughs> well, actually, you just mentioned Quentin Blake and he's part of the documentary about, about your father and you're in the documentary. It's on Saturday night. And it's very, very magical this as well because, of course, it would have been your father's 100th birthday in yep. September. Um, I obviously have to ask you, what was it like? I mean, it sounds magical that you thought the dreams were being blown in your window, but what was it like having that magic man as a father? It was actually a little bit embarrassing at really? the time. Really? Why? <laughs> because he, um, he wasn't like the other dads. You know, all, your, all my friends' dads had... They wore suits and they went on the train to London to work. And uh, my dad had co holes in his cardigan mm. and, and holes in his you know, sandals with holes in them, like, like the BFG. And um, I used to sort of wish that he would just put on a suit and get on the train and go up to London. And also, at birthday parties, we would have to always, instead of giving a... Um, a Barbie or something like that as a present. We would always, he would always insist that he sign a book and we give a book to the, to the, and he wasn't very well known then. I bet they're delighted so, that we've got them now. I, yeah, I actually have had a few letters from some old friends. Um, but now I look, look back on it and I think how amazing it was. But for a child, it was a little embarrassing having your dad being so different to all the other dads. But he was an artist and, and artists are different. And I love it. Is it he took you to school in his pyjamas? He did. His pyjamas and, and in the winter with a, with a yellow woolly hat on. That's how it should be. That's I know. How, <laughs> that's how all dads should take their kids to school. But it was so magical as well with the, the, in, in the documentary about your mother and she had a stroke and you and your mother had to learn to walk and speak together because you were born just after your mother's stroke. Yes, my mother had three massive strokes while she was pregnant with me. And... Um, we, she was, she was uh, unable to walk, talk, read or write. And so it took two years for her to rehabilitate. And so we did it at the same time together. We learned how to walk and talk. And obviously I couldn't read and write it too, but so she, she beat me mm. in that race. What a pleasure it is to meet you. You look incredibly like your mother. You really Thank do. Thank you. So lovely to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, uh, the documentary is on Saturday night on BBC Two at 8 o'clock. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. For more great moments from the show, click here. And don't forget to subscribe. And this is absolutely incredible. So it took four to six months to make, cost £150,000. So let's not touch it uh, too much. A team of 20 people worked on this. And this is even real human hair.